So you wake up one morning and every single deck you own has disappeared. All your oracles, all your reading cards, all your tarot, all gone. What would you buy? So this is a VR to the lovely Brian over at Papa Squirrel who posed this question, what just what would you immediately rebuy if you woke up to that horrific situation of all of your decks, every single one being gone? I love this idea. My first instinct was, well, all of them, of course, but which would be the ones that I would need to replace? immediately. I really had to battle with myself to pare it down. I didn't think of value of decks, I didn't think of collector's value and you'll see that from my ones that I thought these are the ones that I would absolutely have to buy straight away. Some of them are some of the cheapest decks in my collection. In no particular order apart from this first one if I could only rebuy one deck, one deck only, it would be this one, which is an Arica. So this tag also made me realise that I love Oracles just as much as Tarot. And this is the Weaver's Oracle. This is the rapidly becoming the backbone of my entire magical and spiritual practice. This is the deck I sit with at my altar. This is the deck that I use for meditation. This is a deck that brings me magical experiences on repeat and revelations on repeat. This is a deck that is welcoming me firmly into crone energy. This is a deck that connects me to my power. If I could only rebuy one deck, it would be this one. And it would also be the first one I ordered. Out of utter panic, I thought that I might be left without this deck. This deck for me holds so much magic. So the Weaver's Oracle would be the top of my shopping list. So just to show how I'm not led by the monetary value of decks, the next de deck that I would immediately purchase is my little Mythical Creatures Affirmation Cards, which is a Spirit and Destiny deck, two pounds off eBay. So it's elemental, it uses earth, air, water and fire. It uses fairies and mermaids and unicorns and dragons to depict that. And it is what it says on the tin. It's an affirmation card deck. Why would I race to purchase this? Because this is Tilly's all-time favourite deck. This is the deck she asks for a daily card draw from. This is the deck she loves. This is part of our morning ritual. It's also a really good affirmation deck. The affirmations on there are not as twee as you might assume at first glance. I love it. It's a beautiful deck. That's Tilly and Mine's card. A mummy and a baby. And it's lovely. And I think without this deck, our mornings would be a lot, a lot less magical. The next deck, my soul cards. I've only got soul cards one. I love this deck. It is a deck that goes with so many other decks. I like using it by itself. When I do pair it up with other decks, namely the Wild Unknown is the most incredible pairing with this one, which isn't in these decks. Oh my gosh, it's another one I'd have to buy straight away. But when I pair those two, 
it's completely magic i love it i love this deck i love the messages it gives me i love the magic moments it makes my jaw drop open in disbelief at what i've pulled pure magic so a lot of these decks are decks that i am pulling because of the magic that they offer and the experiences that i've had with them the next deck is a really new one for me it's been the first month that i've worked with it but i love it it's the stone deck the crystals deck it was sent to me by a gorgeous friend and i feel the friendship hug in this deck it's a great study deck for crystals because you've got all the information on the back. But more than that, it is just a really peaceful, gorgeous clarifier on the energy for the day. You can either pull it as a message for the day or you can seek out the crystal you need and put it on your altar space or in a magic working. Um, I keep these crystal cards by my front door on my altar there. It gives me an intent for the day. I also sometimes keep them on my near my Kanban board for intent for things that I'm working on that week. But mostly it's because it feels like a warm hug from a friend. I love it. Okay, let's stick with oracles. Another oracle that I would want to replace straight away is my literary witches oracle. Just for the sensory hit that I get every time I use these cards. It's the only deck I've got with that linen textured feel. And there's something about that, that textural feel in this deck that I would, I'd have to immediately buy it just for that. I have said before now, I would buy a deck just for that card stock. But again, this is a magic deck. This is a deck that works with many other decks. It's messages are quirky. It drags me into reading. Uh, well, not drags. Nothing drags me into reading. I'm a reader. But it inspires me to seek out new authors, which I'm doing. It's magical spell ingredients. Cards have quirky messages. Pulls what would be a slightly more normal reading in odd directions. And I love it. So this is the, the Literary Witches Oracle, another one I would immediately rebuy. Most of the Oracle decks that I would have to immediately rebuy, this would be pretty up near the top of my ordering, would be the Moon Oracle, because this is very integrated now into my moon practice and working with the moon. The book I find invaluable for date, and the cards now I use this deck on the new moon or whenever I feel the call of the moon to work through moon workings and moon readings I would really really miss this deck in my collection and I would mourn it on those significant moon dates if I was without it I think the minute I felt a key moon date arriving, there would be no other thing for it but to race to online shops and to get this added on express delivery in my basket because it is a significant and integral monthly part of my magic practice. So that is the Moon Oracle. Now we're on to Tarot. The Light Seers. <sighs> this was gifted to me by um, one of my subscribers for my birthday last year. And I can't tell you how much I love it. The thought of having a tarot study or a tarot practice without this deck now it seems completely infeasible it is gorgeous 
it feels like coming home every time I pull it out of the box. The colours are divine, the cardstock is divine, the backs are divine. It's really easy to use. It's got crows within it. It's vibrant. It's very relatable. It's full of emotion. It's full of rainbow colour and I love it. So the Light Seers would be the first I would order. Then I'd have to order the deck that I think was my first soul deck. The Tarot of the Sweet Twilight. And then this I bought very, very early on in my tarot studies. And it was, those are the packs. It was a deck that I found I couldn't, I couldn't put it down. I worked virtually exclusively with this for nearly two months. And whenever I went to pick up another deck, I just kept coming back to this one. That's my favourite death card of any deck ever. Oh, I love that death card. It's a, a deck that I've heard some people say is, is like um, a teenager deck, which might speak to my childish heart. And I can see what they mean. But even so, I love it. The colours are incredible. The depictions of the cards are amazing. Some are quite quirky. I did do a really in-depth review of this um, when I first started my channel. And in that, I spoke of the fact that some of the, some of the slightly more difficult cards in the deck are given a kind of positive slant and a lot of the really positive cards are given a slightly more negative slant so sometimes it does throw something different into the mix but i think it's just the colors it's the unusual depictions it's the muted tones and it's just the connection that i found with this deck very early on in my tarot life so the Tarot of the Sweet Twilight is another one I'd order virtually immediately. And then another one that I would race to reorder is my Osho Zen. I know pretty much watching other people's walkthroughs of this and other videos of people using it that I would love it. And I don't know why it took me so long to actually pull the trigger and order it, but it did. I think it was just, I was ordering so many decks in my first acquisition year that it just took a while to get to it. And when I did get to it, um, it didn't surprise me at all that I absolutely fell hook, line and sinker in love with it. It is a deck that I really bonded with. I used the videos over on Lisa Pepez's channel, which I'll link below. She did some amazing um, videos using Osho Zen and she did a deep dive video in particular where she compares the cards of the Osho Zen to the Rider Waite and if you have this deck and you want to connect with it more I literally can't recommend that video enough. What I did when I got the deck is I read the guidebook and every Every suit, I read the guidebook for all the cards and then I watched Lisa's video just for that suit. And then I read the guidebook for the majors and watched Lisa's video for the majors. So I kind of watched her video in part along with the reading the guidebook and I flipped through the cards with her in that video at the same time. So a big shout out to Lisa and her work with this deck and her understanding and knowledge of this deck. For helping me connect with it but the Osho Zen is definitely one that I would want to order straight away and then another really quite cheap little deck is the Animal Wisdom Tarot Probably up until a a couple of months ago there's no way this deck would have made it on the list in fact I've got to a point where I was thinking about getting rid of this deck but I pulled it again over the last few months and I've been using it and I've really, really fallen hook, line and sinker in love with it. I mean, look at that 
card. Isn't that amazing? The backs are like this. It is quite glossy, but it's really, it's really playful. It's lovely to use. It does give really clear messages that are all, always really pertinent and accurate. It's called me out a few times. It doesn't pull any punches, but all of its sweet colours and pretty imagery it isn't what you might think of as a hug deck. It will call you out. It will tell you the things you need to hear. Um, but I love using it. It is becoming a firm favourite in my collection. The next deck would be my Thoth. Now I've got the US Game Systems Big Green Deck mass produced one. I'm still studying the Thoth. It was either this or Tarot of the Spirit. I couldn't decide which one. But to be honest, I picked the Thoth to rebuy because <laughs> it's got such a strong voice when I use it will surprise nobody that I actually suspect the spirit of this deck would hunt me down and haunt me if I didn't put it in this list. <laughs> it's it's one of those. Its voice is so strong when I use it and so clear that it makes me laugh. It's like that friend who can't pretty up any opinions and every time they open their mouth, they say exactly what they, they think. Undiluted, unfiltered. That's the voice of this deck, it really is. And I can hear it yelling from the thief's bag. Why the hell aren't you rebuying me immediately? It's loud, it's abrasive. And I love it for that. It has a big character. And then the polar opposite of the Thoth is my The Forest of Enchantment Tarot. It's completely the polar opposite of the voice of the Thoth. This is gentle. Its guidebook is fantastic. It's really green. It's really whimsically fairy tale -y. It speaks of hidden woodlands and fairy tales and magical creatures. It's a story time deck. It's fairies and fae and goblins and gnomes and magical creatures in the depths of the woodland. It's swans. It's lovers under trees, wizards, dragons. witches and runes and witchy circles and magic it is a really gorgeous beautiful fairy tale storytelling deck like i say complete opposite of the thoth which i would miss incredibly if it was gone out of my collection and for that reason i'd have to order it immediately. One of my only indie decks in this selection would be the deck that I won from Christoph James, which is the Raincoast Pocket Tarot. As it holds such a personal language for me, my soul language, it tells of my history and a journey through trauma. And I don't read this deck completely as the Rider Waite clone that it is. I've put my own meanings onto it, but because it speaks to me so personally, this again is a deck that would have to be replaced. Now, Christoph has got a few versions of this deck and I think if I went to rebuy it, I might end up rebuying the latest version, which is a full size borderless, which looks amazing. But in whatever format I replace this deck, this is one that would have to come back into my collection. So that's it. That's my decks that I would rebuy 
if I woke up one morning and everything had disappeared, it's my VR to Papa Squirrel and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.